Okay, welcome back to this tutorial again. Today I just want to talk about SVMs, the storage virtual machines specifically. So we had an overview of the NetApp on top of operating systems and we became familiar with some stuff and some vocabularies and keywords. Today I just want to talk about specifically SVMs. I want to give you some more ideas because the next session would be the lab. and I want to go straight to the lab configuration. I want to make sure that you are all have enough information for configuring the lab. So let's talk a little bit more about SVMs. We had an overview in the previous section, but this is the complete one and I want to talk about SVMs specifically. We have different types of the SVMs. If you want to categorize them, when you log into the ONTAP operating system through the, I mean, usually through the command line, you can see this better. When you log into the cluster on tab, you can see that you have multiple SVM types. So we have data SVMs, we have administrative SVMs, and we have node SVMs. I just want to give you some more ideas about the SVMs, how they works, and how are the differences between these types of SVMs. As you can see in the picture on the right, we have our hardware infrastructure in place here. On the top of the hardware, we have different SVMs. So they are technically isolated from each other from the management perspective, even from the user perspective. And it's like an abstraction layer on the top of the hardware layers. We can move them around and we can work with them. First one is the data SVM. As you can see, it, this one it says it's a data SVM it's, and it serves data to the client. And clients actually can access to their data SVMs, to their data, to their volumes, lines, and safe shares, and whatever they want to access. We have the data volumes inside the, these SVMs. Also, as you know from the previous section, we need logical interfaces to contact the SVMs. And logical interfaces or lifts are the point of contacts between the clients SVMs. On each SVM, we can enable different protocols. For example, uh, we can have SIFs, we can have NFS, Fiber Channel, or or whatever protocol we want or combination of these protocols on the SVMs. This is usually for accessing through the data and use from the clients. And usually, mostly, we as an administrators work with the data SVM. The other one is the administrative SVMs. You have to know, especially for the exam, that we have one SVM per cluster for this uh, administrative SVM. Inside this SVM, we have resources related to the cluster. And sometimes, uh, some people call it C server. We have resources just related to the cluster management in this SVM. As you can see in the picture, so this is the whole cluster. We have the SVMs that their types are data and the clients can access them. And we have some SVMs here, technically one SVM that it's own the resources related to the cluster management. And then we have another SVM per node, which is node SVM. For example, in this picture, we have four nodes, then we have four SVMs related to each node. It actually owned any resources related to each node. What are the use cases why we need to have SVMs. One of the things is that, uh, as I said there, we have isolated environments related to, uh, if we compare these SVM together, they have different boundaries. They're separate from each other. From client's uh, perspective, uh, they think that they are accessing their own storage. So each SVM is actually one separate storage. We have separate, we can then, then separate resources and also workloads. They are different and they are just uh, related to each SVM. In terms of management, then we can have something like delegation if you're familiar with delegation we can assign permissions and give permission to other people or ad other administrators or maybe help those people so they can connect to svm or uh, and they can just run some commands or do some tasks like they, if they want to take snapshots they can do this other things that they we want to offload from our shoulders to other people it's really good that we uh, we can have these svms and we can work with them on top of these hardwares if you compare this picture this is for me, it's somehow it's similar. If I compare this with the VMware, it's somehow similar to a VMware infrastructure for me or other hypervisors that we have the uh, the hardware at the bottom and then we have a hypervisor and then we have virtual machines that we can run on the top of this hypervisor and we can move the virtual machines around. Like if you're familiar with, with VMware environment, uh, we motion virtual machines to other hosts actually. So SV SVMs, it's somehow like uh, having a virtual machine on the top of a hardware. So you can, you're not moving around the SVMs, but uh, we can just move the hardware's 
at the bottom or do the failover and give back on the hardware without any impact of the SVMs. Again, data SVM for accessing the users, accessing actually users to the data. We have volumes, lifts, and other stuff. We have administrative SVMs. It owns the resources related to the whole cluster. And then we have node SVMs, which is per node. We have one per node in the cluster and actually it's on all the nodes and resources. And it's, it's a scope of resources related to the uh, nodes.